This is Michael Wentworth Bell for cgpress.org and in this video I'm going to cover three of the many workflow improvements found in 3ds Max 2016. This video is part of a series of videos that accompany my written 3ds Max 2016 review at cgpress.org. One of my favorite improvements for 3ds Max 2016 is the updates to the Scene Explorer. In this version Scene Explorer is now mostly usable. In 2015 version of 3ds Max there were quite a few errors and issues with it, some that would break scenes. There's still quite a few small annoying things. One of them is that the children layers will not remember their original settings. So you can see here I'm turning off two child layers. I turn off the parent layer and when I turn the parent layer back on there's no layer overrides. The child layers are now turned back on again when they should have stayed off or at least had an option for that to stay. However, overall there's quite a few great improvements. My favorite one is that you can now just double click any layer and immediately select the entire contents of that layer. It's really handy. If you select a parent layer it will select all of the children and the performance of it is quite quick. The other thing is that there's now the plus button which is now returned back which it was gone in 3ds Max 2015 although the way it works is not the same. To use it now you have to select a layer to make it active, make a selection of objects and then you hit the plus button to move those objects to the layer. Another addition is the inclusion of separate scene and layer explorers. This starts to become quite confusing. In some ways it's good but in my opinion it's more a bit annoying. You can see here I already have a layer explorer on the left of my interface. If I actually drag out it's got frozen controls here. Now that's because scene explorer if I go down to tools now has separate global explorers and local explorers. So global explorers are explorers for many different things and you can make your own that will be saved on your machine and they're global. So no matter what project you're working in or what file you're working in, the global explorers are going to be available. The local explorers which are found here are explorers that are saved in, in your current scene and so the settings that you have and the placement that you have for them where they will appear on your UI will be saved per scene and not per session. So the reason this gets annoying because if you open up a 3ds Max 2015 file in, in 2016 you start to have a bunch of local and global explorers and you might turn off this default one just because you want to use a floating layer explorer and then find that it just keeps coming back. But overall it's it's fairly good. Another feature that is immediately noticeable to every single 3ds Max user is the new selection highlighting feature. This is a great addition. It's super fast. It doesn't seem to slow down performance of your scene much at all and it makes scene management a real joy. One of the great things about it is it makes selecting occluded objects far easier. So typically if I was in a situation where say I wanted to select the green bottle in the background but I had a bunch of objects in front of me I would have to continually click and after a while it would finally select the object I want. With the selection highlighting feature I can just hit tab and it's going to give me a yellow preview of objects that happen to be behind my mouse and when I'm happy I can click. I can use shift tab to traverse backwards towards the camera and tab to traverse away from the camera. So that shortcut tab and shift tab make selection really really quick and easy. There's also options available in the preferences section under viewports where I can have combinations of overlays and outlines or turn it off if I want to. So in this case I've got an overlay appearing for an object and then when I select it it becomes an outline. The third feature I'm going to cover is the return of viewport motion blur. Now viewport motion blur was removed 
in 3ds max 2012 when the nitrous viewport was first introduced and as of 3ds max 2016 it's finally back it currently only works when you're using standard cameras not the new physical camera or third-party cameras but it's very easy to set up you just go down to the multi-pass effect and enable motion blur and then hit preview you can see that it will scrub through quickly and use some sub steps in order to give you accurate motion blur in the viewport so the quality is controlled in the sampling here if I choose four for the amount of passes it's only going to give me four passes which is still quite good enough depending on your preview needs as soon as my mouse enters the viewport or if I try to change the geometry in any way the motion blur is lost however every time I make a play blast or otherwise called a preview animation in 3ds max I just have to enable the use multi-pass camera effect option and the motion blur will be seen in my play blast animations too there are a stack of small improvements throughout the program including the ability to easily remove maps in the asset tracker or when you open a scene new options when merging a max scene including the option to rescale units match layers or import render settings a redesigned render settings window though many will agree it's not really an improvement over the old one many of these small improvements and changes such as the viewport motion blur don't seem to be listed predominantly in the 3ds max documentation I hope you have enjoyed this video and I invite you to check out the full written review of 3ds max 2016 at cgpress.org.